Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I am always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited about today's show. I want to listen. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm excited to pick her brain for your benefit today. And as you already know, I'm really excited to pick her brain for my benefit, too. One of the uh, the many cool parts of having your own podcast, folks. Now, for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs or through Powerful Words Character Development or All-Star Cheer Sites or the Jason's Army Mastermind Group, you know how much I focus on the importance of email marketing and email marketing done right. Well, this show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. She's got a ton of valuable information about one of the things I consider to be the difference between mediocrity and success. So the difference between mediocrity and success. So I want you to strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. We only get one ride on this merry-go-round, folks. Let's make sure it's one hell of a ride, shall we? Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your significant other, your child, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our special guest expert today. Heather Jackson is the Director of Regional Development in New England for Constant Contact. A graduate of Harvard, she spent over 20 years experience in sales and marketing with large and small companies with a specialty in online and social media marketing. She's worked at companies including Yahoo and Boston.com. She's also owned two small businesses of her own. Heather's a professional and enthusiastic speaker who enjoys helping small businesses and nonprofits to achieve their goals with a focus on engaging customers, growing sales, and increasing ROI, and driving repeat business and customer loyalty. She's a California native currently living in the frigid Northeast Cape Cod, and uh, she welcomes your suggestions for the best burritos around. Heather, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you today. Jason, great to be here. Well, the pleasure is mine. So listen, before we officially get started, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity and pleasure of hearing you speak before or meeting you, do me a favor, share your story with my listeners. What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Heather Jackson? Well, I'm clearly passionate about the best burrito around, Jason. So I am sincere. Well, in duh, yeah. <laughs> but um, my, uh, my journey's been one of even, you know, I think about the large and specifically small companies, which I started a company here on the Cape. Um, and everywhere I've been, and even today, I've been very lucky to have uh, the sort of ability to treat my own territory, region, and clearly business as my own um, and do what I think is the right thing and build it how I want. But with that comes huge challenges because you don't always know what's right or you don't always, always know which way to go. And particularly when um, I started my own business and, you know, didn't expect to have to learn QuickBooks, did not expect to have to, you know, I'm a marketer, so I was all about that. It was a swag business, so it was helping people, uh, so that's logo apparel, promotional products. It was helping people do that, helping people market, but I had to do all sorts of different stuff that I never thought I would have to. Um, and out of that came a lot of learning and a lot of mistakes. And I think what I love about what I get to do now and I'm passionate about what I get to do now is both um, – Trying to help small businesses, I mean, having been one, I just truly, and I'm sure everyone on the show says they're passionate about helping them. I am. I'm also really passionate about um, just bouncing off them because you, it is so amazing. And selfishly, I want to learn more. I want to self-improve. I want to, you know, take what other people do and 
appropriate it to my own experience. And I just love it. I think I just get a kick out of people and <laughs> walking away and from, from, you know, we do a lot of education and a lot of um, workshops and webinars. Um, and I do a lot of just sort of help. And just sometimes I walk away and I'm like, wow, that person was so inspiring. And how did they ever think of that? And hopefully if I can give them one little piece of information that helps them run their business a little easier on the marketing front, um, then we both can be inspirations to each other because I, I really think there's a joy in, you know, um, being part of the community, bouncing off each other, off other people. And, uh, and so that I've seen about my passion It's helping, but it's also, you know, learning and having that sort of sense of wonder of like, wow, it's so amazing what people can accomplish, um, especially in the small business world. Tremendously cool. Well, you definitely are the right person to be talking to. So I want to dig in because I've got a bunch of questions of my own. Um, but feel free. Um, you know the folks who we are speaking to and who are listening in today. So any uh, anything else that you can add in, you know, feel free to uh, to get there. So one of the things I hear so often, I think from people who don't know how to use the medium, is email's dead and everyone just has too much spam. Um, what's your take on this? Is it dead? Is it alive? You know, do we need to actually get the uh, paddles out and, you know, charge back <laughs> to life? Where are we at there? I honestly believe it is more alive than ever. And I say that for a couple reasons and I'll give a caveat to that. One, it's more alive than ever because that is truly where you can have and develop a one-to-one -one relationship. So there's all these tools out there um, to help you get people to join your email list. And trust me, I am very lucky. I get to, um, I, I'm sort of on a speaker circuit. I know you've interviewed some folks that I speak with that have way more followers and way more influence than I do personally in social media. I'm lucky to be affiliated with constant contact, but what these people talk about, they could be a Facebook expert, an Instagram expert, an SEO expert, um, a podcast expert and what they want to do, what they're talking about at dinner is not how many likes and followers and, um, you know, folks they have on a given webinar. It's what is the cost of getting someone to their email list? How many people do they have on their email list that are quality that are engaging? Um, and that's because I believe that truly the, the, uh, you know, you need a lot of touches, but the ultimate sale now is happening in the inbox. Now the caveat and to your point is that we all get more email than ever. So to do this right, there are some very simple tips and steps you can take. It is not uh, uh, rocket science, as they say, but you do need to stand out and you need to stand out in a couple ways. And uh, to a very, uh, you know, if I could impart one thing is you've really got to think about the impact of mobile um, and how email looks different and how you interact differently on a mobile. Um, and sort of, again, bringing that full circle to underscoring why email is not dead, I would be floored if there's anybody listening who hasn't checked their email today. Um, and I'd be floored if somebody's probably not checking it right now, multitasking while they're listening to us, right? We hope not. But um, I, I think we look at our phone. I just heard a stat. We look at our mobile phone. It's 150 times a day. Um, you know, over 60% of emails open on a mobile. It's like 91% of people check their email daily. So I just think that people are using it. And even young people, I just spoke at a college there, they use it to communicate. It's just, um, how do you make sure that you stand out? How do you make sure you get opened and how do you make sure you're using it effectively to develop that relationship? Cause that's what we're, that's all we're talking about, right? Is developing and nurturing relationships. That does make sense. That really does make sense. So, you know, as far as, as far as, uh, you know, you, you brought up mobile, you brought up uh, you know, this appendage that has now attached itself to everybody's hand. Um, you know, how specifically do you feel like it's really changed email marketing? Like, has it, has it, has it, aside from the fact that we can open it and we, we see our stuff immediately, what's different now? So I've been doing educational workshops and I have my own uh, digital marketing uh, business where I was doing email marketing for clients and I just would speak to try and get, you know, exposure and get myself out there. So for five years or seven, six years, I've probably been speaking now. And I would say the best practices, like what we talk about and how to put emails together and 
you know, what to put in them, how long they should be, how often to send them, sort of every, all the, all the nuts and bolts of it have changed, I'd say, in the past year and a half. Not that we haven't been looking at email and mobile for longer than that, but just because it's so prevalent now. So, like, for instance, a major thing is that you've got to have a, preferably a mobile responsive template. All that means, you know, and then, and you know, every template in Constant Contact um, is now mobile responsive, and we have a new editor. Um, but most email service providers, so Constant Contact, our competition, they're going to provide you with mobile responsive templates. Um, all that means is that, you know, whether you're looking at it on a desktop or you're looking at it on your phone, horizontal or vertical, it's going to align, right? But you basically have to have a mobile responsive email because if people can't read your email on a mobile, they're going to unsubscribe. Um, and the other major thing, if you look at the amount of content, I don't think like the type of content, and I hope I know we'll get to that, like uh, what type of content you want to put in, but the amount has dramatically changed because if you take one picture, two to three sentences, and a single call to action, and by call to action, I mean that button that says, click here to read more, click here to learn more, click here to email us, click here to, you know, whatever it is that, take this action. That takes up basically everything on your screen and a little more. So you're losing around 20% of your audience with every thumb scroll, if you think about it that way. So on the good side, or I think to, you know, for your audience, the way to think about it is this really has made things less complicated because less is more. So newsletters should just be, literally, we say, think about it being blocks and the best practice is one picture or a video, two to three sentences, and then that call to action. And at most, you want three blocks, but one is plenty. So you want to have less information, less, you know, it should take less time to put this together. Um, and you might be sending it more frequently because I think we all are willing to, if it's valuable, read something, you know, I'm more than willing to get an email twice a month or once a week, as long as I know it's one thing I can get to quickly versus, you know, the original newsletters where you're taking what you sent out once a quarter, putting it into an email format. And it was, you know, <laughs> 35 minutes to read. Yeah, it was a small book. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of companies that have a lot of information to share, so that can be a challenge to think about. But I, I think, um, you know, there's ways to segment your audience and there's ways to simplify it um, to figure out what really is important for you to to send out. That's fair. That's actually really, really helpful. Just right there, understanding the less is more is really a great start. Right? Mm. You know, I, I, and again, I, I, I was, I was most certainly guilty of this early out, you know, sending the you know, three page email and, and not understanding why I wasn't getting the follow through when everyone's trying to read it on their phone and going, dear Lord, how much longer is this damn thing? Right. So that, that actually does make a lot of sense. What would you say, um, in your experience has been, you know, the biggest mistakes that you see people make when it comes to their email marketing? So I think the biggest mistake they make that I made a million times um, is that we talk about what's important to us, meaning come join my after-school practice, come join my dance studio, come join my gym, come take my classes, come or buy my product or um, hire me or you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, we own a business and we need to do these things to be able to <laughs> make money, to pay ourselves, to run our business, to do what we're so what we what we're passionate about. But that is not, you know, on social media in general, email marketing, and even think about it in person, right? That's not how you walk up to somebody in person. Um, you know, you're sitting next to somebody at a game, or you're talking to your neighbor. You don't say, "Oh, I sure wish you'd hire me today," right? You're going to talk about what, what I think you want to think about is what is going to be valuable to that end user and how can you use your knowledge of your business or identify like what would put them in that pain point to think, wow, this is really valuable, helpful information that's going to help me make better decisions. It's going to help me avoid making mistakes. So a tip I try to give people is to say, okay, instead of talking about 
here's my upcoming classes or here's my next sessions or here's my next program. Um, you know, here's my next mastermind groups. It's thinking about how can you help people, um, Like just even thinking about living their life a little easier so that you show them that you kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, So it's putting yourself in their shoes and then thinking about what would be helpful. So, for instance, you know, um, if somebody's trying to get involved in a uh, uh, after school activity or being part of a group, why not share some articles or answer you know i always think about too even backing it up to be simpler think about the most frequently asked question you get and just answer that so if you can constantly be educating people about it might be about your business but it's probably about what are some of the benefits of making this certain action or how can i share i think about um like how can i share a tip or piece of advice how would I explain what I do to somebody who has no clue what I do, right? So to your grandmother, your cousin, your neighbor, um, but really giving information that's going to help that person today. And again, that can be inspiration. That can be things that make them laugh. It doesn't have to be about your product or about your service or about your program. It can be something relevant to that. Um, and the other thing I think about is, So drilling this all down, right? Remember, what we're trying to do here with all these tools and with all the stuff that makes you crazy is basically help people get to know you more, like you more, trust you more, or know you better, like you more, trust you more, know, like, and trust. That We do business with people we know, like, and trust. That has not changed in however many hundreds of thousands of years. So now you have these social media tools and all social media and email marketing let you do or talk to a lot of people at one time. So you can be yourself, you can get your message out there, you can share your tips, you can share your advice, you can educate people in one fell swoop without having the same conversation a hundred times, right? So it just gives you a different tool, but all we're still really trying to do is, and think about it, you have to show people you're an expert, you can't tell them you're an expert. You have to show people you have great customer service, you have to show them that you care about their challenges. Um, and I think by, you know, the, the, the advantage that small businesses have is that they get to be their authentic self and they can really put themselves out there and build that relationship and use tools like email marketing to say, Hey, did you know, here's some tips or hints or advice, or did you know this? Um, so that you can really give people, um, I guess so that they can, you can build that relationship. And then the other thing to think about is you just want to make sure, again, email marketing, 97 out of 100 emails are going to get into someone's inbox. So if you think about just trying to stay top of mind, and that's why that less is more, right? The average open rate is like 20%. It's not the same 20% every time, but just based on people's attention, what's going on. But 97 people out of 100 are going to see your name and your subject line. So you have the opportunity to at least stay top of mind with people and one, make it easy for them to connect with you and two, make it easy for them to refer you because we will do business with them. We'll refer people that are also top of mind. That's actually a great point as far as even if they don't open it, they're, they're seeing your name over and over and over and over again. That's, I think about it like the, um, I think about it with regard to like a annual insurance policy, whether it's like your home or your book, you know, or maybe for some of your folks, um, you have six or three month sessions or whatever it might be. Like it might not be right for me to sign up right now. I'm not going to change my auto insurance today because somebody sends me an email or I, or I meet them or whatever, but they have that window. There's that window when I am going to sign up for something or I am thinking about making a change. And how are they going to get my mind share? How's that insurance agent going to get my mind share? And I think about what are the chances if somebody's been sending me an email once a month that says, you know, uh, giving, and I think that the advice to think about is what insurance do you need when your kids go away to college? What insurance do you need when an employee is driving your personal car? Like those things that aren't just come check out our rates or just come, but it's sort of like, what are the things that happen to somebody in life where their insurance is affected? I had no clue my insurance was going to like triple with one speeding ticket. 
I would have loved to have known, you know, it'll make your, you know, subject line. Did you know speeding tickets will make your, do you know how much a speeding ticket will make your insurance go up? Exactly. I would, okay. So, um, but I think about it. Okay. If that person's always sending me that stuff and maybe I don't open everyone, but when that five day window comes and I'm thinking about just, Oh, I'll just keep who I have, or maybe I'll go out and bid. I'm going to go to that. I'm going to think about that person who has been sending me that valuable information saying, wow, that guy really knows, or that woman really knows about the things that might go on in my life. They're not just, hi, I sell insurance. Please come check out our rates and buy from me. Right? So I feel like that was a long winded say way to say, Answer people's questions and be an educator, and you can't go wrong. Um, and I think a lot of folks, especially in, you know, they know so much about what they know, they don't even realize what, it, uh, you know, what an asset they can be. It's kind of like the interior designer or the physical trainer. I mean, think about like a physical trainer. I think I know you're into the martial arts, but they know so much about just how the body works and nutrition and like serotonin levels and endorphins and all this stuff and like thyroid gland and I think about, I've learned so much about health from talking to people in that business. And it's not just about what they specifically do. It's about trying to live a a healthier life. Um, So I think there's so much uh, material or there's so much that people inherently have inside that if they wrote down, I do this in in workshops, I say write down one or three or ten things that you know about your business that the person next to you probably doesn't. And I guarantee you, so much of it is obvious. You're like, well, obviously when you work out, your endorphins, you know, kick up and your serotonin levels are balanced. Well, a lot of people don't know that. So you think about, you know, um, taking your inherent passion and your inherent knowledge and what you've learned over doing your business for however long you've done it and sort of taking some of those nuggets and sharing them. And then, of course, you know, want to live this better, healthier life? Well, sign up for my uh training sessions. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. I love this. This is so helpful. Now, for somebody who's actually not yet started their email marketing, even though they know they should, even though they know I've been up their rear end about it, um, what advice do you have, you know, for somebody to get started? You know, what do they need to have? What do they need to do? What are their first steps? This is a great, I'm so glad you brought this up. Okay, for two reasons. Because one thing I have not hit on, um, and this does not need to impede you, but one thing I want to talk about with regard to email marketing in particular, why it is so valuable and not dead, is not only the, you know, how easy it is to use. So I definitely would say to start, you want to stop doing blasts out of Outlook or Gmail where you're doing a big BCC, right? You want to get hooked up with um, what we call an email service provider. Like, so it's a constant contact, a MailChimp, or whoever you might be. I would recommend constant contact, but I'm just saying you want to, that's going to be one framework. But before you do that, I would, again, I'd start with writing down what are your top 10 questions that you get. I would, you don't need a big list. So the two things that hold people back are one, they think they can't use the software. Um, you get a free trial of constant contact with whoever you can see that is easy to use the software Two, you start your list. It doesn't have to be perfect for all the perfectionists out there. It never will be because you'll always be adding and you'll always be cleaning it up. So don't let that impede you. Um, and I say that as somebody who had a shoebox full of business cards from, you know, chamber networking meetings and I thought, oh, I can't start email marketing because I don't have all my names from my cards in. And finally somebody said, Heather, just, you know, start where you are and move forward. Um, But you can build your list even if your website isn't perfect, even if you don't have your email up and running, even if you want to start gathering that list of emails. And then you can start small. I, I have clients that have an email list of 50 and it's still very effective because again, you're staying top of mind. You're making it easy for people to get in touch with you. Um, and you just have to start somewhere, right? We all took a plunge to start our own business when we didn't necessarily know we would. So I'm a big fan of just sort of starting and going. Um, but that email list, why it is so valuable and why it will be, um, moving forward is that not only you own it, obviously, right? So you kind of, you own your website, you own your email list, 
you're renting space on Facebook, you're renting space on Instagram, you're renting space in all these places, right? And they can change the algorithm, they can change how it works, they can change everything. You own your email list. Um, but the other super powerful thing, so in addition to having that email list, you can now very easily, and you do not have to be sophisticated, but you can very easily take that email list and overlay it. You know, I've heard some of your guests talk about social media ads. You can overlay it onto a Facebook ad, for instance, so that you can retarget. So you know when you go and you, uh, you know, look for a house on Captiva or you look at a pair of shoes or whatever, and then you open up Facebook and there's that pair of shoes or there's that house in Captiva and you're like, I went to Captiva three years ago. Why is that there? But you know, when you, when you've looked for one thing and then it follows you everywhere you go online, mm -hmm. that's called retargeting. Um, and that can be done through using your email list. You can also take your email list and sort of say, here's my ideal folks. Hey, Facebook, cause you know so much about me, not my name, but you know, Hey Facebook, can you create a, sort of like a profile audience or the ideal group of people that are going to be similar to these people, similar to this email list. They're not on it. They're just similar. And then let's hit them with, um, you know, with our messaging and our, and our ads and our info and our downloadable guides and all that. So it's just taken the email list is a very powerful tool. Um, so I don't want to intimidate, you know, you don't have to be doing that yet. Um, and maybe you never will, but I want your listeners to know that that list is a very valuable tool, both for use emailing and then for use um, with some other advertising. So to get started, um, uh, to get started, just plunge, take the plunge is what I would say. And don't worry about being perfect. Think about answering a question um, and, and get that list. And then also I strongly encourage people cause they're so scared of like, okay, am I going to be spam or whatever? Again, talk to people like you'd like to be, you know, speak to people like you'd like to be spoken to. So I frequently tell people they're like, well, I don't want people to think I'm spam. We'll send your newsletter out. And in the opening words of the first couple say, Hey, we revamped our newsletter or we're launching our newsletter. We hope we're finding you. Uh, we're, we're providing you with valuable information. If not, no worries. Feel free to unsubscribe because there's nothing wrong with people unsubscribing. It just means it's not a good match. That is fine. So, um, again, I think, and by providing people with that, they're more likely to unsubscribe than mark you as spam, which you don't want, right? So spam is not a good thing. Unsubscribe is fine because it's just a saying, Hey, it's not a good match. Spam is going to send a red flag, um, you know, to your email service provider, to Verizon, to Comcast, however you're sending your email out. So you'd much rather have people unsubscribe than uh, mark you as spam. And again, not to get too into the weeds, but no, no, no. That's uh, that's actually a really important point. I and I loved, I love the piece you did on on retargeting and the, you know the importance of that list is just, you know, just just know that if you're not doing it, you got to be. You yeah, just, you just do. So. Tell me this. Do you have a favorite example or a case study that you can share, you know, of somebody actually going through and, and, and benefiting from email marketing? I, I do. Um, and it's one I, I love to share. And I maybe you have some plumbers on the line, but if not, I think everyone can relate to this. But one of my favorite um, examples, and you think about it, it's like, what is a plumber going to put into a newsletter that's going to be, you know, educational, entertaining, inspirational, right? That's a tough thing to do. But this group, and they were actually um, uh, at a, like the Quincy Weymouth area, Jason, where I know you said you spent some time. So they did this newsletter at Thanksgiving time that, um, and they, they had a sense of humor. So again, they were their authentic selves. Um, but they put out a Thanksgiving newsletter, it was the top 10 ways not to clog your disposal. <laughs> and the subject line was like, is that the plumber sitting with Uncle Ralph? And the, they use a, you can use like a preheader or a teaser text. It's like a sub, uh, you know, secondary subject line that said, you know, make sure you, know, you don't have the plumber with you. Here's top 10 tips to avoid clogging your disposal. And this goes to um, one of my strong feelings is that you should give away the farm, like share everything, you know, and again, show people you're an expert because then they will come to you for advice. They will hire you. I'm not a big fan of, 
here's your top eight tips, but you're going to have to come, you know, pay me, hire me for the next two. So I'm a big fan of sharing it because that proves you're an expert. So anyway, they shared the 10. They were great tips. Um, they also did put in, and in a very, uh, they're very community oriented. You know, they have a great involved staff. They said, Hey, here's our, um, a couple of pictures of our staff at a, uh, Thanksgiving event for this nonprofit that we care deeply about. And, um, it was not, again, not self-serving. It was just like, Hey, here's what we're doing this Thanksgiving. Let us help you know us a little better. So the deal was you think, well, why would they want to help people not? plug the disposal because you think they want the business and the bottom line is the plug doesn't want to be out at Thanksgiving. It's a low margin business. They want the, you know, bathroom installation, the kitchen redo. They want the they want a big deal. And the amazing thing that came back from that, I talked about no like and trust. They got three emails back. Well they got many back, but three that were meaningful. One was Wow, you sound like a really trustworthy company. Thanks. I didn't know that lemons are okay to go down and limes aren't. Um, could you please give me a bid on this bathroom? A second person came and said, um, wow, we were down to three people, but you seem um, like you really care. You know, again, very trustworthy. I want you guys to come do my my bathroom. They got like two bathrooms. And then another one was a kitchen um, deal. And that came from, wow, I am super involved with that same charity. Um, could you please give me a bid? So two bids and a closed deal out of sharing with people how not to clog. And you can imagine all the goodwill they generated with everyone else who didn't just happen to respond, um, where they just provided great information and kind of in a funny manner. So those, that's one of my um, favorite case studies. I love that. It's, you know, it, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, and, I mean, a lot of this I feel like people probably – kind of sort of know but maybe haven't taken action yet hmm. again i think you just start answering questions like if you can be the educator um and help people make the right choice it shouldn't maybe the choice doesn't always come to you it was a great story um about um marcus sheridan who you know became he had the pool company and then he became this great speaker and uh social media marketing guy, but basically on his website, he answered every question. And if the question was, you don't want a built-in pool, you want a, you know, uh, a different aligned pool versus the built-in or whatever, however that goes. But he, they were very honest. So again, you gain trust by actually answering someone's questions, honestly. Um, and don't you think maybe the person didn't hire him for the pool because it wasn't the right fit, but when their buddy wanted the pool, they're like, Oh, you should talk to that guy. He knows everything and he'll point you in the right direction. Um, so I think that there's just, you can't go wrong, um, again, answering questions, providing tips, helping people, because then they're going to trust you more, like you know, like you more, um, uh, like know and trust. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. All right, it, folks, it is time for our resource of the week. So Heather, tell me this. How can my listeners find out more about you, connect with you, get in touch with you? Um, obviously, you are a wealth of knowledge, and you know I know that there's – people out here listening to this podcast right now going, all right, I kind of understand what she's saying, but I still have some questions. What, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? So obviously you can connect with me directly. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Heather K. Jackson. I am, but you can contact me by, um, by email if you're interested in learning anything more about Constant Contact, hjackson at constantcontact.com. And then an amazing resource, if you just have questions about um, – is on the Constant Contact website, but it's blogs.constantcontact.com. It is a veritable, just amazing resource with uh, frequently asked questions, blog posts. You can search anything that has to do with social media or email marketing, and you're going to have some great answers, um, you know, all for free and all, all out there and all for the public. So I encourage you to go check that out as a resource that um, Constant Contact really puts a lot of, uh, of resources behind. But... Um, but yeah, and then please do check out, you can also check out, uh, I'll send a link, Jason, you could check out local um, seminars and workshops, and then we do webinars um, regularly that anybody from around the globe can join on all sorts of different topics as well. I've actually uh, I've actually sat in on a couple of the webinars, and I find them to be tremendously helpful um, at, at every level, so... You know, I would urge you folks to, uh, to take advantage. It's, uh, it really is a no-brainer. And so let's see, we've got hjackson 
at constantcontact.com. Uh, you can reach her on LinkedIn at Heather K. Jackson. And then the blog site that Heather was talking about was blogs.constantcontact.com. Um, I will actually list all of these on the show notes so people can click directly through. But for those who want to just get out there right now, um, by all means, reach out and make contact. All right, Heather, I always like to end my podcast with what I consider to be a telling question. So if you could give business owners just one solid piece of advice to either help their business or more importantly, to help them to live a better life, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, good one. <laughs> There's so many things. You know what? I, and I just did it. It would be breathe. And that's a muscle you have to flex, right? I'm just learning. I do it's something I don't always do, but having had that sort of freak out moment, like, how am I going to get everything done? Where can I go? I could probably give you a million of those things that people like, if every day goes right, like write five things down, do the hardest thing first, do your exercise. But when the day's not going exactly like I planned and that seems to happen where things out of my control change that day, um, I would like to give your listeners some advice on that. And it would be just to breathe, just to, um, Give yourself a pat on the back and make a list of things. You might have had a lot of things in mind you wanted to get done, but at the end of those days, write down a few things that you did get done because we all do more than we think we did. And then, um, you know, no matter where you are, I just, and I love this, I, I referenced it, but uh, it's that quote from Arthur Ashe, which is, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. I love that. That is fabulous. Heather, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, so it really does mean the world to me that you share some of your time and a whole bunch of wisdom for myself and my listeners. This has been fabulous. Jason, thanks a lot. I love your podcast and uh, I'm flattered to be here. Ah, fabulous. All right, folks, that's all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning into The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you benefit from one of my mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. And this has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.